Hey y'all, it is me FC, and today I am going over why Pulse Chain is going to be better than Ethereum. And in this sense, I'm going to talk, be talking about the networks, not the coins. So, I went to PulseChain.com. We have a whole list of goals through Pulse Chain, and I want to highlight two of them. So all of these goals are going into how Pulse Chain is actually going to help Ethereum. The first one is um, increase Ethereum's value, so Ethereum fees will be lowered by sharing its load, which is awesome. So really, in a way, it's not even a competition; it's just a way to help Ethereum. Um, but what Pulse Chain is is it's a fork from the Ethereum code, and it is just making it better. So one of the main things, at least for me, is Gwei is, I feel like, my worst enemy. Like, every single day, <laughs> I look at Gwei and I'm like, oh, even if it's low, <laughs> it's still, like, a very expensive fee compared to what uh, the Pulse Chain network is going to give us. So it Pulse Chain is going to outperform when it comes to fees as well as speed. And to give Ethereum some credit is they do have Ethereum uh, 2.0 coming out. Now, that has been talked about since like December 2020. I even like saw it in this article that I'll show you. Um, it says that it's going to be fully released this year in 2022, but who knows? Like, <laughs> we never know, right? So there is that. So it is going, Pulse Chain is going to be better when it comes to fees and when it comes to speed. If you have done any testing on uh, Pulse Chain testnet, you know that the fees are literally so low. <laughs> which is awesome. Sorry, don't want that on while I talk. Um, another thing is, is something that I want to highlight is it removes pollution. So right now, Ethereum uses a, a way of mining that's called the proof of work. So by replacing proof of work miners with proof of stake validators, Pulse Chain doesn't burn waste any energy making it environmentally friendly. So I brought up an entire article from Coinbase of what the difference is between proof of work and proof of stake. So with the proof of work, currently Ethereum and Bitcoin use proof of work. And Ethereum knew that eventually that this was going to put limitations on the scalability of the blockchain. So they knew eventually they would have to move over to this proof of stake. So go through this article. Like seriously, it's very in depth of um, the difference between proof of work and proof of stake. So proof of work, it's where there are miners that are going in and doing this work. So a problem will be sent out to all these different computers in the world and everyone is competing to have the fastest response time to this particular problem that they're trying to solve and then they're able to mine through that. Now think about that. All of these computers are going in and trying to compete. That means all of them are using the same amount of energy to compute it, right? And so like em environmentally that is absolutely bizarre of how much energy that's taking. So right here proof of work is the older one. Um, it's used by Bitcoin, Ethereum 1.0 and others. The newer consensus mechanism is called proof of stake and it powers empower yeah, it powers <laughs> Ethereum 2.0, Cardano, Tezos and then others. So Pulse Chain is going to be one of those. This part goes into what proof of work is, basically what I just said about the miners. And then I thought this part was cool. There was a specific sentence that I really liked. Um, so proof of stake uses validators to allow for um, like the mining to be done, but it's through staking instead. And oh, it's right here. The exact details vary by project, but in general, proof of stake blockchains employ a network of validators who contribute or stake their own crypto in exchange for a chance of getting to validate new transactions, update the blockchain, and earn a reward. So this is super cool. Uh, as I've gone through testnet and I've practiced, there is a place where there are validators. So people are going in and clearly it's all test, right? But once mainnet comes out, there will be validators that you can jump in on. Um, and this kind of goes in more depth of how if you're not like the main validator, how you can be a part of it, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, it talks about how being a validator is a major responsibility. And then 
you have to be like a well-performing validator because then you get strikes and everything. And that's, that can be seen on uh, Pulse Chain Testnet. Okay, and then this goes over just like what the differences are. So the energy consumption is probably the biggest one, right? And we live in a world where we're trying to live clean in the sense of being environmentally friendly. So this will be a huge, huge um, help in that. And then uh, proof of stake allows networks to operate with substantially lower resource consumption, which is what I just said, basically. And then I'm going to read this last um, paragraph. Both consensus mechanisms have economic consequences that penalize network disruptions and thwart malicious actors. In proof of work, the penalty for miners submitting invalid information or blocks is a sunk cost of computing power, energy, and time. In proof of stake, the validator staked crypto funds serve as an economic incentive to act in the network's best interest, which is great. In the case that a validator accepts a bad block, a portion of their staked funds will be slashed as a penalty, and the amount that a validator can be slashed depends on the network. So Pulse Chain is really going to be an awesome network. Richard Hart said that it's going to come out mid-May. We'll see if that happens. I'm really hoping that it does um, because it has been long awaited and come into Pulse Chain and see what other things that they're doing to help the Ethereum network and how they're also being able to fork from the Ethereum network and uh, be able to just be an awesome blockchain. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.